Right now at 6, breaking overnight, a deal reached that could lower drug costs for older Americans. What we're learning about this deal this hour. Expect your electric bill to go up even more. Regulators approved another increase. Angelo Bavaro will have the details. East Haven police say there have been at least two unprovoked attacks against officers this week. What they're calling on the community to do in response. All local, all morning. This is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Six o'clock, good morning, happy Thursday. Thanks for starting yours off with us, America Arias. And I'm Tim Lammers, good morning. We hope you slept well if you're just waking up. And for all you all-nighters, happy evening, I guess. We, hey, we've been there too. Let's get over to meteorologist Matt Scott. He has got the forecast. Either way, the sun's coming up for everybody. Happy evening, in all of, of, or good night. In, good night, yes. All of the years, back me up on this, Erica, because we've worked with him for a long time. Has he ever said something like that on the... Not that I recall. No. <laughs> That's uncharted territory. But isn't it more to the point that you haven't? You yeah. haven't once talked to the overnight no, workers? No, we have, but we've never said happy <laughs> evening at 6.01 <laughs> in the morning. That is uncharted territory there. Good morning to you. Nice to have you along. We've got some sunshine out there this morning as the sun comes up. We will see a couple of afternoon storms. Not a big deal. Humidity is slowly tweaking it upwards. It's back up and running, which means so is your AC. Which means so is your electric bill. Oh, man, I don't want to hear that story that we, we teased a moment ago. Still unsettled for the weekend. We'll talk about that coming up. Satellite radar picture is quiet. We've got a uh, flow still out of the north. If you notice up towards Vermont, uh, central to western parts of the, the uh, of Massachusetts towards the Berkshires, a little bit of isolated rain. We'll watch to see if any of that holds together. But that's where our activity later on is going to be coming in from. 58 to 66 is your spread on the board. you got 66 is on the shoreline 63 in Hartford your dew point has been percolating all week long it's been behaving nicely but now that we have it in the low 60s and we'll increase it a little more past that stand by you know, start to feel that humidity out there a bit so an isolated thunderstorm too certainly possible later on this afternoon as we get the temperatures in the mid to upper 80s like what we saw yesterday uh, we have a forecast that's a little unsettled for the weekend that's never good news we'll talk about that see if we can keep the temperatures low for that electric bill too coming up in a few minutes 602 rachel piscatelli good morning to you i, I you know we, we always try to give you the news the good to bad and sometimes the ugly and that mm -hmm. that electric bill story i don't know i know i've heard it this morning so mm. and it's not so you're saying I should just do this? Yeah, cover your ears. Okay. Yeah. Do we note it? All right, 602 right now. Uh, we are uh, following um, just some road work over in Waterbury this morning that has not wrapped up for the morning commute out on the east end, the westbound side of 84. We are looking at exits 17 through 16 and 15 through 16 that are seeing some intermittent lane closures because of that. That'll wrap up soon. Over in Cromwell now, Route 9, both directions look a little bit better. We did have some earlier fog. Otherwise, Cromwell to Middletown is three minutes. Route 9 to I-91 North is about 11 minutes and once you jump on 91 Rocky Hill to Hartford looks nice at a seven minute drive. Also no major delays for your airports if you're traveling this morning. Windsor Locks, LaGuardia, Newark as well as Albany, Boston all looking good at this hour. Well send things back over to you. Hi, Rachel and at 603 we got breaking news from the White House just moments ago. Officials announced a deal to lower prices for 10 of Medicare's costliest drugs. These include the blood thinners Xarelto and Eliquis and the diabetes drugs Jardiance and Genuvia. The Biden administration said it expects to save taxpayers $6 billion and patients $1.5 billion on medications. More than 67 million Americans depend on their health coverage from Medicare. Well, this morning, state lawmakers on both sides of the aisle are speaking out against another increase coming to our electric bills. State regulators approve new rates for Eversource and United Illuminating. Now, those are kicking in next month, and this is on top of the one that people just saw on their July bills that sparked sticker shock all across the state. At Fox 61's Angelo Bavaro joins us now. He is live right outside Ed Eversource headquarters in Berlin with more on what the lawmakers on, again, both sides of the aisle here are saying about this. Tim, Erica, good morning. And Republicans and Democrats using words like outrageous and crushing to describe these back-to-back -back increases. Republicans are calling for a special session to tackle this issue. And a group of Democrats is calling for a public hearing so you, people at home, can share how these higher bills are affecting your families. 
Now let's talk about the impact of this latest increase that was just approved on your wallet. So Eversource says they estimate the typical customer will pay an additional three bucks per month from September through April of 2025. UI says their customers can expect, quote, minimal impacts to their bill, still waiting to see what that comes out to in dollar amount. State regulators approving the increase yesterday. Now this is to offset $80 million for the state's electric vehicle incentive program. This increase coming on top of the one customers just saw last month in the public benefits charges of their bills. That was the largest increase on record. Both Eversource and UI say that money covers costs for programs and policies required and approved by the state that they do not control nor profit from customers now wondering why these charges are even being tacked on to their electric bills. It's just uh, another punch in the gut. It shows how much of a disconnect that our lawmakers have with the citizens of Connecticut. And again, lawmakers are responding this morning. The moderate caucus, which bills itself as a coalition of fiscally responsible pro-business Democratic legislators, is calling for that public hearing. The group writing in a statement, quote, the cost of carrying unpaid bills or paying for the EV infrastructure in the public benefits section of the electric bill is a public policy decision and not part of supplying, generating or delivering electricity. These do not belong in ratepayer bills. And the Office of Consumer Counsel now voicing in as well, calling for a reevaluation of the annual rate adjustment proceeding. We're live in Berlin this morning. I'm Angelo Bavaro, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Angelo, thank you for that report. All right, 6.06. Uh, this morning, East Haven police said officers have been targeted by unprovoked violence twice now this week. They said yesterday morning, a car sped up to be right behind a cruiser on Fox and Road. They said the car then flashed its high beams and rear-ended the cruiser twice. In a separate incident, police said somebody threw poop at a cruiser and then taunted the officer trying to get him to give chase, but the officer didn't. Police said this is part of an alarming trend that they're seeing in several communities. We've learned that many of the recent violent encounters involving our officers are being perpetrated by young people in our community. This is not just a law enforcement issue. It's a community issue that now I want to speak directly to parents and guardians in our community. We need you to be present in your child's lives, to engage with them, and to ask the tough questions. As you heard there, officers are asking parents out there to please be aware of what their kids are doing during the overnight hours. A woman accused of locking her malnourished dog inside of an abandoned car is expected to be in court for a plea hearing today. Kadisha Wilson is facing two counts of animal cruelty. She was arrested back in June. Uh, one of the dogs did not survive. Animal advocates are calling for her charges to be upgraded from a misdemeanor to a felony. They believe there should be tougher penalties for animal abuse. And take a look at this pup here. Animal rights group Desmond's Army is offering a $5,000 reward for information leading to an arrest in connection with whoever left the German Shepherd tied to a guardrail on Route 8 in Beacon Falls. Now, the dog named Root now named re renamed new route was found Sunday night near exit 25. Anyone with information should contact Woodbridge Regional Animal Control. Our man will spend 35 years in prison for the murder of a 15 year old two years ago in Hampton. Prosecutors say Janai Ward shot and killed Elijah Gomez while Gomez was walking home from school along the Farmington Canal Trail. Attorneys say Ward didn't know the victim and there wasn't a fight or word said before the shooting. Gomez's mother addressed the court during the sentencing. I'm sad every day. I'm miserable every day. Every day I don't want to be here no more. So every time you feel like that, I feel like that too. I just need to know why. I really do. Even if it's in private, I need to know why. Okay? You hear me? Ward also spoke during the hearing, saying that he regrets his choice to kill Gomez every day. This morning, a Vernon man is facing DUI and other charges after police said he was driving the wrong way on I-84 in East Hartford. Police said they eventually found 61-year-old Andre Kamensky's car parked in a construction zone near exit 58, and they said the car was facing the wrong way. 
police said several people had called to report a wrong way driver around 3.30 yesterday morning. They said they arrested Kamensky after he failed a field sobriety test. He is currently out on bail. This morning, Waterbury's Teacher of the Year has a new job meant to form a connection between the school district and the mayor's office. Robert Hashi will serve as the city's educational liaison. Mayor Paul Pernuski says Hashi's job is to focus on leading a team effort to address issues affecting teachers, staff, and students. The district recently parted ways with its superintendent in concerns about low test scores and low teacher morale. The city has not named a new superintendent yet.